Hello and welcome once again to my channel. If this is your first time here, a very warm welcome. I'm glad that you joined me today. This is a channel all about the history of religions and spiritual movements. So if you're interested in those topics, I hope you'll uh, join with me. For each video, subscribe to the channel and please leave your suggestions and comments and questions. Today I'm talking about Wesleyanism or Methodism. And this is a request from a viewer to do a bit of research and to tell some of the history and the uh, things that Methodists believe. There are currently about 75 million people calling themselves Methodist worldwide. And in the United States, the United Methodist Church is the second largest Protestant denomination here. The group was founded by John Wesley, which is where they get their name. He was born in 1703 in England. He was actually the 15th child born into this family, the second son only. His father was the Reverend Samuel Wesley. He was an Anglican rector of Epworth in Lincolnshire, and his wife's name was Susanna. John was educated at the Charter House School in London and later went on to study and graduate from Oxford University. He was ordained an Anglican deacon in the year 1725 and a priest in 1728. From there, he went on to work as a tutor at Lincoln College. There, he joined a group of like-minded friends who wanted to study the scriptures, and they were called the Holy Club. They were nicknamed, however, the Methodist because of the disciplined manner in which they went about their studies, and that name Methodist stuck. In the year 1738, uh, Wesley had what we would call a spiritual experience. And the outcome of this experience was that he was convinced that people were saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ and, and also that this salvation was available to all people. And after this, he began a very public preaching of his message. It's said that he uh, traveled at an estimated over 250,000 miles in the 50 years that he went out preaching. He died in March 1791 in London and he is buried there. Methodism is part of a larger movement that was called the piety or the pietist movement. Pietists began in Germany within the Lutheran branch of Protestantism, and it spread to England in a group called the Moravians. Wesley was greatly influenced by them and by others who taught a similar message. So what do the Methodists believe? Well, their beliefs started with the 39 articles of the Anglican Church, but this was restructured. Some of them were deleted and different ones added on. I'm going to refer to an article by a man called Thomas Nettles, and I will leave a link to that. He's writing the um, Gospel Coalition is the site, and um, I'll link that also. And I just want to read his summary of the theology. While taking the 39 articles of the Anglican Church as its starting point, Methodism accepts the final authority of Scripture and affirms the theological and 
Christological orthodoxy of the first five centuries. Methodism affirms the spirituality and the desire of conformity to Christ that was expressed in many of the spiritual writers of medieval Christianity. Methodism separated itself clearly from the leading distinctive doctrines of Calvinism. Calvinism was also uh, popular and on the rise at this time. Methodists believe that the atoning work of Christ is the root of a grace as uh, its retroactive effect is universal in removing the guilt of Adam's sin from all men. So the work of Christ provided grace for everyone and removed what others called original sin. The work of the Spirit is a universal phenomenon restoring because of Christ's universal atonement the intrinsic capacity to respond positively to God's revelation. And notice that word universal has already been used three times in this short paragraph. Uh, the message of the Methodists is that God's grace and mercy and the work of Jesus is for all people. It's a universal work. While maintaining, um, uh, let's see, Methodism uh, embraced the conviction of Wesley that the experience of many throughout Christendom may be genuinely saving and fundamentally Christian, even if elements of their theology have a corrupting tendency. In other words, he believed that people were saved if they uh, had a genuine experience of salvation. Their experience could be genuine regardless of the particular group that they were affiliated with. So um, that was the first place that uh, we found the foundations of the Methodist belief in the 39 Articles. The second place is in the sermons of Wesley, and I'm going to put a link to a place where you can find his sermons in PDF form uh, in the description box, but all you have to do is uh, do a Google search for John Wesley sermons and you'll find them there. This, the next uh, place we find their doctrine is in a work of John Wesley called Explanatory Notes Upon the New Testament. It was published in 1755. He wrote this during a time when uh, he was having some uh, his physical difficulties and couldn't keep up with his usual activities. It was originally written as a source of Bible study for serious people, people who wanted to study the Bible, but in their own language did not have access to the original Hebrew and Greek. One other source of information about the teachings of Methodism, and probably the closest to uh, their founder, John Wesley, is in what is called the Doctrinal Minutes, or the Doctrinal Minutes. Uh, this is one of the formative documents, or sets of documents, of the denomination. And uh, what had happened was, from uh, 1744 to 1748, Wesley met with a small group of like-minded men who were preaching or preparing to preach their style of Christianity. And he would pose questions. They would have discussion about these doctrinal questions, and they would present a summary of their answers. And then Wesley himself would provide the final synthesis of each doctrinal position. 
and the history of these discussions and his final synthesis are available for study today. So this is a good way to really get close to the teachings of John Wesley himself. And then finally, we find the Articles of Faith as being the, uh, the um, place where you would discover um, the teachings of John Wesley and Wesleyanism. So Methodist accepts the authority of scripture. Um, it's a denomination that calls itself the denomination of one book and it separated itself clearly from the distinctive teachings of Calvinism. And that is the first and most definitive split in Methodism was over the Calvinist approach to predestination. In addition, though, there were several branches of Methodism and many of them united in the year 1907 as the United Methodist Church. And then specifically in Great Britain, the major branches, including the UMC, the United, merged in 1932 to become the Methodist Church of Britain. Now, in the United States, the UMC has struggled with diverse opinions regarding sexuality, same-sex marriage, and similar topics for several decades. It appears that the discussion on the issues has now failed almost completely, and the church uh, facing this and the decline of American members of the membership in America declining, it appears that this church will split once again. Congregations on both sides of the issue are withdrawing fellowship and exiting the denomination. While historians and outsiders are watching this crisis unfold with interest, it's something that has divided American uh, Protestantism into conservative and liberal branches reflecting the political climate of the country. So it'll be interesting to see um, how this works itself out. Well, I hope you look further into Methodist belief and practice and you can find uh, lots of information about them online and there are Methodist churches all across the country if you uh, are inclined to visit one. I'm sure you'd receive a warm welcome. Well, I hope you learned something in this video and will join me again next time when we're going to look at another group and see what their history and their basic beliefs are. So in the meantime, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you again real soon. Bye for now.